Hey everybody, welcome to Tutor Terrific. Here I've got a chemistry video for you. This is kind of part two of my reactions video. Um, no, this isn't really stoichiometry. It's more about the basics of reactions. So um, there's five types of reactions and we're gonna look at the fourth type that I mentioned in my last video, single replacement reactions. We're gonna analyze them today and all that um, is involved. We've got uh, the basic uh, model here for these types of reactions. We've got a single element that um, it's combined with a compound here. Um, and what happens is element A, if it meets certain criteria, will knock the cation B off the compound and take its place. Um, and so we have AC as a compound plus B. So these two switch places basically. Um, the silly uh, analogy to this is a, a jealous guy sees another guy with his girlfriend and he uh, fights the guy and uh, with the bow and then he takes her bow and sends him packing. So that's kind of the analogy, but um, uh, if that doesn't help you, you don't need to use it. Um, now what I wanna uh, make clear is that um, the particularly with this A versus this B, whatever these elements are, um, A will be able to knock off B if it's higher on the what's called activity series than B. So this activity series shows you the order in which uh, elements are lined up that are more active than others when it comes to single replacement knocking. So lithium is at the top of the list actually. You'll see a lot of the uh, group one and group two metals at the top of the list. Lithium, then potassium, barium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, those are all group one and two elements. Then we get some uh, group three elements and transition metals, aluminum, manganese, zinc, chromium, iron, cobalt, nickel, we get some post-transition metals like tin and lead. Then we get some non-metals like hydrogen. And uh, then go back to some uh, higher uh, weight copper, mercury, silver, platinum, and gold. Some higher weight metals in the transition metals. So those are at the bottom of the activity series. I'm sure there's more we could fit in here. But as you go up the activity series, you increase your strength and ability to knock other elements out of compounds. So here and I'll get to this in a second, but over here, this statement. If the lone element on the reactant side is higher on the activity series than the cation of the compound on the reactant side, the single replacement reaction will occur. Otherwise, no reaction. So if A happens to be lower on the activity series than B, there will be no reaction. But if A is higher on the activity series than B, then the reaction will occur, A will knock B out. All right, also, when we create Bs, sometimes the element that gets knocked out is one of these elements, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. When those elements have to be lone by themselves, they actually don't uh, sit in isolation. They actually combine with a pair, another one of themselves. They're called the diatomic elements for that reason. It's actually more stable for them to um, bond with one each other covalently this way. And so keep that in mind as we do our examples. All right, so let's look at some examples here. This uh, first example, we have iron plus copper sulfate. All right, so what we're doing again is we're making sure iron is higher up on the activity series than copper, which is the cation in the compound there. Now let's look at the activity series. Where is iron? Iron's right here. If copper is below that, which it is, iron will knock out copper. So, for this to occur, we will switch the positions of these two metals here. So we will now have iron sulfate, we'll have to charge balance this, plus copper. I'll leave a space there in case we need a coefficient. Okay, so, first we must charge balance any compounds we make. What we have here is sulfate, which is minus two. Now, iron uh, was originally neutral, and here, for it to balance charge-wise with sulfate, it would have to be iron two. And we are going to, for all intents and purposes now, assume that it is iron Roman numeral two, so it has a two plus charge, combined with a minus two charge of sulfate, so they are balanced. And copper is neutral, it's just an element, so we don't need to try and charge balance that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to balance the whole reaction. So uh, iron, we have one, and here we have one as well. So iron is done, move to the uh, right. Starting from the left, we have copper next. We've got one copper, one copper. So that one's good as well. 
Then we have sulfur, one on this side, one on that side. And we have oxygen, four on that side, four on that side. So this one is done, the reaction does occur, and it's balanced. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have potassium plus sodium cyanide. Remember, these are both group one metals, so they're pretty high on the activity series. But let's see if potassium is higher than sodium. Potassium's number two, and sodium's number five. So yes, this reaction will also occur. Potassium will combine with the cyanide ion, and then we will have elemental sodium by itself. Now, potassium has a charge of plus one because it's in group one on the periodic table. Um, CN, the cyanide ion, uh, has a charge of minus one. Now, you might need to uh, review your uh, polyatomic ions and their charges because I'm assuming you know them, and you do need to know them definitely by now to do these right. Okay, so with a plus one potassium ion charge and a cyanide minus one charge, these are charged balanced. All right, so um, let's begin. Potassium, potassium, one each. Sodium, sodium, one each. Carbon, carbon, one each. Nitrogen and nitrogen, one each. So this again, bounce. So easy so far. Now, this next one, we've got aluminum, elemental aluminum plus copper chloride. Uh-oh, copper is a multi-oxidation number transition metal. So this is copper two chloride. How do I know? Because this is Cl2, each chlorine ion, chloride ion, excuse me, is minus one. And so copper has to be plus two since there's two of these. All right, will this reaction occur? Is aluminum higher up on the activity series than copper? Here's copper way down here, and you have to go pretty far up to get to aluminum. It's the highest non-group 1-2 element on the activity series. So yes, this will occur as well. So we have aluminum chloride plus copper elemental. All right, now we need to charge balance aluminum chloride. This is definitely not what it is because aluminum is in group three. So it has a charge of plus three. Each chloride ion is minus one. So we will need to balance this plus three with this minus one, we'll need three chlorine atoms. Okay, now we're gonna get into some balancing issues, okay? So we start with aluminum, everything's fine, but as soon, uh, and if copper, everything's fine, but as soon as you get to chlorine, we've got a two versus three. And I told you in my previous chemistry video, you go to the side that has the odd number of what you're trying to balance and you double it, okay? because most teachers don't allow you to use decimals. Now, we have six chlorine, and over here, I can multiply this two by three to get six chlorines over here. Now, of course, these two changes I've made have messed up my previous great balancing. So let's go to the first change I made, aluminum. If I have two on, aluminums on this side, now I'll have to have two elemental aluminums over here. And then we have three coppers on the reactant side, so we'll have to have three coppers on the products side as well. All right, so let's check two aluminums, three coppers, six chlorines, six chlorines. We are good to go now. All right, last one. We have silver plus iron phosphate. This must be iron Roman numeral three phosphate because phosphate is a charge of minus three. Will this reaction occur? Does silver knock out iron? Well, let's look. Here's iron right in the middle. Do you see silver above it? No, silver is almost at the very bottom. Silver is very inactive when it comes to this type of reaction. This will not occur. Silver is not as strong as iron on the activity series. No reaction will occur for this set of reactants. So that's how you state a no reaction. Got a few more examples coming your way. Okay, let's look at the first one. We have silver nitrate plus sodium. Now, I know I listed the element second, but it doesn't matter really. This is just a symbol for the reaction. Of course, in three-dimensional space, it doesn't matter whether one's on the right or left. Uh, they still could react. Um, so sodium, you gotta look and see if sodium's higher up than silver on the activity series. I think you might've figured that out. Sodium's way up here, number five, and silver's third from last. So silver's getting booted. So here we have, uh, we're going to have sodium nitrate. Sodium is going to take the polyatomic anion, and silver is going to be on its own. 
okay? Now we check and see if sodium and nitrate are balanced. Notice I'm not bothering balancing what I'm given to start with. I'm gonna assume that the teacher has, uh, or the person making these problems has made sure the reactants are balanced for sure. Okay, sodium is plus one since it's in group one. Nitrate, put your thinking caps on, did you memorize these? Uh, NO3 is nitrate and it's minus one. So that is good to go, one to one ratio. So let's check. So we've got one silver, one silver, that's done. One nitrogen, one nitrogen, that's done. Three oxygens, three oxygens, that's done. One sodium, one sodium. Okay, so that uh, was fine, no problem there, totally balanced. Next one, sodium plus, what is this? Well, sometimes we've seen water uh, written that way, but you can uh, state it now as hydrogen hydroxide, okay? Um, will sodium knock out this hydrogen here? Well, let's look. Sodium way up here, number five, hydrogen way down there towards the bottom, so yes. Here's what's going to occur. And this is the reaction, that violent reaction you might have seen on TV of sodium and water. What's gonna occur is sodium hydroxide will be made an AOH and hydrogen gas, but you do not just put H. It's one of the diatomic elements, and so it will be H2, like so. All right, so let's try and balance this. We've got one sodium on each side, no problem. How many hydrogens do we have on each side? Well, on this side I have two, but on this side I have one, two, three. Uh-oh, we've got a problem. On this side there's an odd number. Now they're split up as well. So which, uh, which item on this side makes it odd? Well, it'd be this one, which has one, so I'm going to double it right now. Okay, so now that's doubled. Now we've got four hydrogens over there. So what do I have to do on this side? Since I have two, I need to double HOH. Now I have four hydrogens. But, of course, other things have been messed up as well. Now there's two sodiums over here, and there's one over here, so I'll need to double that. And uh, let's check oxygen now. There's two on this side, but, uh, joy, there's two on that side as well. So let's make sure we've got two sodiums on each side, we've got four hydrogens on each side, and we have two oxygens on each side. So this one is done. So don't forget, remember, if you knock any of these guys out on their own, they need to be doubled, they're diatomic elements. Okay, next, iron phosphate. PO4 is Roman as uh, minus three charge, so this is iron three phosphate. And then we have sodium with that. Is sodium gonna knock out the iron? Yes, sodium is higher up on the activity series than iron. Remember, we're asking if the element by itself is higher on the activity series than the cation of the reaction. Okay, so yes, so this reaction is going to occur. Here we have sodium taking the place of iron phosphate. Okay, I know it's not charge balance yet, we're gonna work on that in a second. And then I'm gonna also get elemental iron. So now, let's work on this. We have ooh, to charge balance this, I almost forgot. Charge balance, so PO4 is minus three, gotta memorize that and sodium is plus one. Since it's in group one on the periodic table, so I need three sodiums to make this charge balance. Okay, so now we've got a little job to uh, balance this whole thing. If you start with iron on the left, we're good to go. It's one to one. With phosphorus, we're good to go. There are one on each side. And uh, oxygen, we're also good to go. There are four on each side. So it comes down to sodium. One on the reactant side, three on the product side. We need three sodiums on the reactant side. Now we're good to go. Next, copper plus aluminum sulfate. Okay, the reason there's all these numbers here is because aluminum is plus three and sulfate is minus two. So I need a three two ratio to make this balance with plus six and minus six charge. Okay, will this reaction occur? Let's look closely. Copper, way down here on the activity series. It needs to be aluminum. Aluminum, unfortunately for copper, is way up there. It's higher up on the activity series, so this one is a no non-starter, no reaction. 
All right, guys, so that's how you use the activity series and that's how you complete your single replacement reactions if they occur and you write no reaction if they don't. Don't forget about the diatomic elements, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Falconator, signing out.